everyone, bringing you a short video today, uh, just running through the uh, webbing contents carried by Ramsey, a friend of mine who you've seen in previous videos looking at rations and so forth. Uh, he is uh, once again taking part in a, an event uh, called Monty's Men Trip, which is happening in the UK this year. Previously, I think in previous years, perhaps not last year, but in, in years previous to that has, has actually been held in France, but it's being held more as a training exercise in the UK. Uh, and they, they actually live on compo rations and so forth in the field for a week, I think, uh, and try and accurately recreate the, the life of a soldier uh, during the middle years or latter years of the Second World War. And so Ramsey suggested, and I thought it was a good idea, to run through the webbing contents, the contents of the 1937 pattern web equipment, which he's carried in the field, which will primarily focus on the, the contents of the haversack. So without further ado, we'll get on to have a look at that. So we're at the halfway point on the Derwent Walk and we thought we'd uh, do a video looking at the stuff Ramsey's got together for the Monty's Men Trip. So could you just quickly tell us a bit about the Monty's Men Trip, Ramsey? Yeah, the Monty's Men Trip is going to be taking place in about a month, month and a half time, so at the end of June, beginning of July. It's a 100% living history trip, so we will get dropped off in our modern vehicles and that's going to be it then. So we'll be... Uh, We'll only be able to carry what we can, we'll only be able to take what we can carry. Um, we will be living off compo, so we've custom made crates and um, we've got the original packing list, so we're going to be using the original menus to see how they fare. Um, we're hiring weapons from an armourer, so we're actually going to have blank firing weapons. Um, and all the tactics and all the command structures are all going to be as they would be in about 44. I think we're setting it July 44 in France. Um, unfortunately, we can't take weapons over the border due to uh, border regulations. However, we are going to try and make the best of the uh, terrain that we've got, which is a huge, massive site from what I've been told, because I've not been given the RV point yet. Okay, and you're going to run through the bits and pieces. You have your web equipment loaded as you would do for the Monty's Men Trip yeah, pretty so, much today. So Simon's asked me today to come along and just talk about what I normally take on the trips. Yeah. Um, this will be my fourth trip. Um, there's a lot of guys out there that have been doing it for years and years and years. Um, but this is what I found from personal experience of what I personally carry. When I started off, I took everything, including the kitchen sink, with me. And in reality, you don't really need it. Stuff like, um, even simple stuff down to like triangular stoves. By July 44, you're all down to compound. And in reality, when you think about it, the triangular stoves were only issued on D-Day. So by the time July comes around, you probably wouldn't have it because you'd have used it. You would have used your stock of hexamine tablets and you wouldn't be getting any more. Um, so from that point of view, you can discount it. Actually, we're so active on these trips that when you stop, you tend to drink water because you're sweating through that much. Last trip I did, it was probably about 25 degrees C. Um, and you're just sweating buckets all the time. So you need the water, you need to put that back in. And the only time you really need to stop to eat or have a hot drink is at night. Usually when you're in a fixed position and you get the petrol coupons come out. So therefore, it's quicker and easier to use petrol cookers, number two burners, um, or improvised cooking, rather than fanning around with a little bit of a triangular stove thing with hex and wax. So hence why you won't see one of those in my kit this time around. So let me open one of my pack. I know in the past people have gone through the ground sheet capes and stuff. Actually, it's a massive, great big weight. In reality, all you really need is your gas cape rolled in the top. So that's what I'm going to be taking this time. Camouflage scrim scarf. I don't tend to wear it around my neck, but it is a very, very, very useful item. Certainly if you're miles out and you've got to keep quiet and you've got to keep out of sight, it's a perfect thing as part of camouflage. Cardigan. I tend to keep my cardigan in my small pack. A lot of guys keep it in their large pack. Um, but a problem that I found on the previous trip is sometimes your pack, your large pack, doesn't reach you. So if you're going to be spending all night outside, you're going to need an additional layer. So hence why I keep my cardigan in my small pack. That's my comfort cardigan, the wife made it for me. Just get out and show it to people. There we go, simple button front cardigan. Made from the comfort pattern. In green wool. I'll be taking my mess tins. These ones are the aluminium uh, early type ones. 
I might consider taking the mid-wall set, but within it, because I've got a role of an NCO, I'll be taking a recognition scarf. Um, not that we're ever going to uh, have an air attack on the Monty's Men trip, but um, it's something every or most NCOs carry for air recognition. Not that they need it in Normandy because we had air superiority. Anyway, that's another point. I have something else for another video or something. I usually end up taking a small little shaving mirror, unbreakable shaving mirror, um, in a cover. Um, the cover's made out of an old duster. Um, one of the guys in the group has actually got an original one. He's got um, a graphic painted onto the front or, or screen printed onto the front. Nice item. So I've tried to replicate that within this. Well, that's not strictly prescribed for the small pack, I do tend to keep my sewing kit within it. Again, if you get to the end of the day, and you find that you've ripped your battle dress trousers or there's a button pinged off the back and your pack doesn't reach you then you can still sew up your uniform with it. I still carry my emergency ration, very useful item actually and the chocolate inside is brilliant for additional cannons. And I now carry, this is one thing I never used to carry, is a candle. Um, when I did the Dunkirk march back in 2010 I didn't take one and regretted it, mainly because when it got round to night time, we didn't have any light at all. So when you're trying to get all your kit out of your pack, actually, just a little bit of light is very, very useful and helpful. A candle will always light. If you take a bun or something like that, then you've got to carry additional paraffin. This, get a match that comes in compo anyway, and you can light that almost, it will always light. That'll be the contents of my mess tins. Then finally, or nearly finally, I take the contents of my wash roll, which contains, as it should, knife fork spoon, razor, shaving uh, soap, shaving brush, toothbrush. In here, I've got a little tin of tooth powder. I prefer to carry tooth powder because I find it keeps my teeth cleaner. You might want to carry toothpaste. And in there is a piece of soap wrapped in greaseproof. At this end, I've got spare boot laces, a piece of string, quite a long length of string actually, which is always a useful item to have. And I always tend to carry one of these, which is useful for emptying, for opening tins and compost. Um, mainly because I've found, I've come to certain crates in my past and found they don't have the key on. So it's always useful to carry a spare key for me though, that's anyway. The last thing I carry, sorry, two last things I carry. Towel, that's my towel. Just simple, straightforward white towel, um, this one's actually a 50s data one, but I've got 1943 one which is identical. And the last item I carry with me is this. Not cigarettes as it says, this is actually the only piece of relatively modern equipment I carry, and that's a first aid kit. So within here you've got plasters, list of plasters, I carry eye wash within here, um, and a small little uh, bandage, because if you have any strains, sprains, if you get something in your eye, then potentially it's going to be a while before you get back to the medical station so it's always useful to carry a personal medical kit with you is what I found on the trip and that's what we always say. So apart from that, stuff in terms of my pockets, I'll be carrying a water sterilising kit, um, obviously my pay book in an anti-gas wallet. Um, I will be taking a little bit of money with me, not that I'm going to have a chance to spend it or not, but just in case anything really gets into difficulty. Um, and probably a little bit of food as well um, because I found that sometimes it can be hours and hours and hours before you get anything else so it's always worth having a little bit of food um, so yeah there you are Simon that's brilliant thank you very that. much Ramsey yeah that's excellent just nice run through of the bits you carry for doing living history yeah they are they are subtly different to what is prescribed um, but that's based on my experience your viewers might have something that's yeah, completely different absolutely or they but might we... have stuff they want to not carry or stuff they want to add in yeah but it, it's uh, interesting from that point of view the bits of personalization so thanks very much for that Rams that's brilliant welcome, Tom. thank you and just to say your kit here Rams is obviously you've done it as per the concealment the camouflage instructions so you've painted half yeah half without blackening in my face yes yes without blackening your face so yeah. you can see I've added the hessian cover underneath here obviously with net plus string just yes. break up the outline so the Hessian doesn't allow the light to reflect and the helmet net with this in breaks up the shape of the helmet. Yes. I'll have to do a bit more Hessian in it. To be yes. Okay. Um, I painted the brass on the webbing. Obviously it's dark green shaded webbing even though it's starting to rub off now but it was originally when I did it dark green. 
you can, um, see, you can see on the belt buckle here, it's actually been painted green, as you can see, yep. the brass has been painted yep. in. It's Again, just starting to wear off. To wear, yeah. uh, I probably did a year and a half ago, something yeah. like that. Um, and yeah, without back, uh, the boots have been dubbined. Yes, of course. Um, hence why they haven't got the shine on them at all. So, but yeah, uh, shy of um, blackening my face and my yes. hands with cork or cocoa. Yeah. Um, or soil, which I could do to be fair, yes. but I'm not going to. No, no. Um, then, yeah, that's it's not really the purpose of this march. I just thought it was interested to note that your webbing has actually been painted with brasses because yeah. it's not something many people know about, no. obviously, from a camouflage point but of view. But if you read the Prepare for Battle in the 1944 Infantry Training Mark 8, uh, sorry, number 8 on field craft, yes. then this is exactly what it tells you to yeah. do. Excellent. Fantastic. So there we are, I do hope you found that interesting. Obviously there, there is some customization there in terms of contents and this gives a little bit of an idea um, of how men may have slightly altered the contents of the haversack depending on personal experience and their role of course, Ramsey being an NCO and obviously mentioning details related to that. Uh, this of course was filmed on the walk um, around the Derwent Reservoirs which you, the, there is already a video of on the channel so do check that out if you'd be interested to see more of that. Um, as I say, very good of Ramsey to, to do that. And obviously he was carrying the contents of his web equipment and uh, around on the walk and was sort of using it as a shakedown run to make sure the web equipment fitted comfortably and so forth. So um, definitely a good, uh, a, a good experience from that point of view, a good idea to go and do something like that. If you're going to be in the field for a while, uh, wearing the web equipment, make sure everything's fitting comfortably and is properly adjusted. Um, so a useful experience from, for Ramsey from that point of view. And I think he thoroughly enjoyed it as did the rest of us. So do check out the video on that if you haven't already. Uh, but that's everything we wanted to cover in this video. Uh, as I said before, I do hope you found it interesting. And if you if you did, and you've uh, not subscribed already, then please con consider doing so. Uh, and if you are already subscribed or newly subscribing, do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button to be notified of future uploads. There's also a Facebook and an Instagram page where I post photographs, sneak peeks of videos upcoming and other photographs from events like this, uh, f from the walk and so forth. So if that might interest you as well, then please do check out those pages. The link's in the description as always. Uh, but that's everything wanted to cover in this video. So until next time, bye for now.